I'll do it too, Boston. I'm going to start doing it tomorrow. I'll try to try it with you. <laughs> you I, have a bunch of it. I want to see what will happen. You have astrologist powder? Of course. I can't resist. <laughs> I'll join you. This is like steroids for me now. This is what I do. Yeah, you got it here. <laughs> The next guy is his name is Right Left, which I think is a song by YG that I actually like. Right Left says, "Any insight on bodybuilding with hypothyroidism?" Which is what we we're talking about with Palumbo earlier. I mean, Palumbo mentioning that you know people taking T4 for hypothyroidism. Anyway, it says, "Does levothyroxine, which is LT4, have an impact on training or muscle growth?" Uh, I thought maybe I could just answer this quickly from a scientific scientific perspective. Your muscles have T3 receptors in them, and hypothyroid people have worse muscular function. And uh, subclinical hypothyroidism, which means when you have high TSH, but your T3, your free T3 is not low, your free T3 is normal, you still have worse function muscularly. If you add LT4 in, it doesn't improve. There are studies that show that. It seems to need more T3, even if your TSH is just high. I'm not completely sure if that works though, but, but T T4 by itself doesn't work. So basically, if you're hypothyroidal, you will develop muscle worse. You need to mm -hmm. resolve it somehow. What do you guys think? I think it's also the metabolism and, and the, the conversion of uh, building blocks, you know, into skeletal muscle. So sometimes like I have a couple of clients with, that came to me with high thyroid stimulating hormone, and then you incrementally bump up the T4 dosages until they, um, until their, you know, TSH comes down and they're free and their total T3 are within range, but you don't want that too high. Because otherwise it has a, a catabolic effect. That's why I, I'm not really a big fan of T3 supplementation on contest prep, even with a ton of Trembolone. It's I, I was due to a replacement dose of 25 micrograms, and that's where I keep it. But you also got to remember that if your metabolism increases, your food intake also needs to increase. And T4 and T3 also contribute to sexual and binding globulin production. So some guys might experience you know, some libido loss. Because their T4 and T3 uh, levels elevate significantly and then their sexual mobility globulin goes very high. Of course, you can suppress that with androgens, but not everybody's on androgens. Did you know so, that ghrelin modulates steroidogenesis in the testicles? I just discovered this, shockingly. I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do explains a little bit. It explains a freaking lot because yeah. uh, I, I've had so many libido consultations with guys that did post cycle therapy and then their testosterone is low because they, their appetite is not good. You know, so they could cascade into the griddle levels. Yeah, it's. Yeah. So uh, he also asked, he said, I've heard many experts give gear dosage, dosage recommendations based off a mathematical equation using a person's body weight. Other experts say that a person's response to androgens has nothing to do with their size. If someone were 130 pounds versus 200 pounds starting the same cycle, would they notice a difference assuming all other factors are the same? I hate that. That's that Broderick Chavez. That's Broderick. I know. <laughs> I knew it was him. Dude, I do so that fucking, though. I, I do that. Dumb. Do you that's know so he's doing dumb. a series with Fouad now? Like they're traveling yeah. around the world misinforming that. people together? No, they're, doing <laughs> they're doing webinars, so they're going to be charging oh. people. Okay. Oh, wow. so they're going on, online and misinforming people together. It's, <laughs> it's an excellent combination. One guy thinks he knows everything. The other guy doesn't know anything, knows he doesn't, but he's going to talk anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do use this this i do use the calculation though sometimes especially to design cruises it's the lowest effective dose what i've seen with a lot of clients is that you know as long as you stick with one milligram testosterone per one pound of body weight you get to keep all your gains during a cruise so if you're 300 pounds during anything, a test i just don't think you know. anything should be looked at about uh, at numbers because yeah. everyone's going to respond differently yeah that's true um, right. everyone has different genetics let's let's just kill let's just kill this topic once and for all okay it's simple you guys all have different androgen receptors there's over 90 androgen receptor polymorphisms that can make your androgen receptor less receptive than somebody else's so how the hell would we all equate just based on body weight why don't you judge our androgen receptor genes why don't you judge something else also this is the same reason i get a, i get frustrated boston when somebody goes to a doctor and they're like uh, for example they're like like I'm going bald. The doctor's like, oh, let me test your DHT in your blood. The hell does that have to do with it? I'm going bald. Whether my DHT is high or low, I'm sensitive to the DHT. So I'm going bald, you know, yeah. or you could, I mean, you could be going bald for another reason, but if it's like, a male, I'm, I'm clearly bald. not, and I'm clearly not <laughs> sensitive, right? We don't know like that, I, Steve, because you cut your hair in a perfect way where if you were going bald, I wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah, it's a it's little bit, sneaky. but my dad it, and my grandpa, it's pretty my grandparents, sneaky. I have nothing, you know? Yeah, I'm hiding it. Yeah, that's my way to hide it. Boston, but I can take dude, a, Boston. A, Look at Boston. I can take a ton of Primo and Mastrone and nothing happens. No hair loss whatsoever. Yeah, I never, I never got any hair loss ever. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But Some fuck, dude. 
I get scared because everyone's like, I lost it at 30. Like 30 was their age. And I'm like 29. And I'm like, fuck, am I going to start losing my hair next year? <laughs> I'm 37. So don't worry about it. You <laughs> no, know, that's, don't worry that's, about it. Something weird does happen at 30. I'll be honest. I with think you. There's, there's some, yeah. Oh, your body shuts down. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like recognizing. Like, uh, but Leo, responding you know? to that question, I think black people, African Americans, they respond way better. Like whatever yeah. you said. That's why you can't give dosages, uh, you know, based on body weight. I have guys that I could put on so little and they keep responding. And I'm like, wow, they just keep responding. And there's other guys that don't respond shit, uh, you know, so it's, it's all different. Yeah. Yeah. I usually consider it a starting point. And then there's always some additional adjustments to make sure that it actually works. So some guys end up lower, some guys end up higher. Right. Like I've had clients on their own, like a, a cycle of a gram or one and a half grams for over a year and their blood work doesn't budge. It's all in range. All of it. Well, my, my cholesterol will be in range. Yeah. If I do that, yeah. for example, my oh, cholesterol, cholesterol, liver, enzymes, kidney function, well, everything's a, a gram in range. of anabolics to me is little. Yeah. Okay. That's positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, run gram, I run a gram of each. I mean, shit, I'm in kidney failure and I'm running and I refuse to run anything under what? Like, I'm on. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm on I, I was on like a gram and a half i think or a gram you, you, yeah. you, you, you're never thinking about stopping and giving your body a little uh, break no i did i did i came no, off like that. a real break like i did you know like no a couple no, no, months. no no i did for three yeah. months okay. no training mm-hmm. yeah, no drugs for three fucking months dude no experience oh, okay okay everything low protein did it all and then like my creatinine still went up it went worse, yeah. That's why. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's. Yeah. I mean, how are you? You think about it psychologically. It's really hard. You, you're doing no, your best, and the creatinine keeps yeah. rising. I mean, no, I the same I thing. With on, the... I did stay on 100 mix of testosterone. That's it. Okay, no, that's acceptable. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very frustrating if you're doing everything you can, and it's not improving. I had that with the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I came off, and I did all the health supplementation, and then it improved like 50 percent over like six months. And I'm like, fuck this! I'm just gonna stop eating. Mm. Exactly. You know? I'm doing an experiment now, Leo, that you'll be interested in. So I was doing that astrologist that everyone is like, dude, it's the only thing that helps your kidneys, astrologist, astrologist, astrologist. So, but I was only taking like seven to nine grams a day. So I talked to this guy that that's very knowledgeable in the industry, Mike Arnold. He told me that he knows multiple people that he had take 30 grams of astrologist a day, 10 grams, three times a day. Yep. And they went and their GFRs went from in their teens, like anywhere from 13 to 15, all the way into their mid thirties Wow! Uh, in a pretty fast period of time. So I said, you know what? This shit's cheap. Uh, I went on bulk supplements.com for $30. I bought a two pound bag of astrologist mm-hmm. and I'm taking scoops of this shit three times a day, dude, like 10 grams, dude, <laughs> that shit makes you shit like crazy. That <laughs> does it really it cleans you out so much. Like your shit smells like the astrologist powder. What the yeah, hell? there's a lot of fiber. So, so I, I did a very high dose of astragalus as well. I think it was 20 grams, but it, okay. it didn't change anything for my creatinine. But my cystatin and seed dropped to the bottom of the reference range. I so that's like zero. Point. How high was your creatinine? So the highest I've seen after a leg day was like 1.92 milligrams per deciliter. And then the lowest I got it up to after the fasting mimicking diet was 0.97. Wow. So you were yeah. able to drop it from 1.9 to 0.9? No, so mine hovered around like 1.5 most of the time. And it's with training. And then if I would take two weeks off, it would come down like 0.1, 0.2%. So let's say I'm a, between 1.3 to 1.5. Yeah. And that's running estragalus root at a maintenance dose for like six grams per day, four grams, six grams per day. Yeah. And it, it, it never budged my creatinine. Only my cystat and C kept getting lower and lower and lower. Oh, yeah, and lower. but your creatinine was never that high. I, the, 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 the stories that I've seen that astrologist does wonders and was guys are like... Three point three point yeah. five, you know, all exactly. Time. Yeah, very very high creatinine. So you just have to persist with that with a very high dose, and 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 stay hydrated, you know. Or maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I said it's thirty bucks. I bought this big ass bag, but dude, that shit makes you shit all day long. Holy fuck! Yeah. Dude. I'm no, gonna it run smells it. Smells like it. I'll do it too, Boston. I'm gonna start doing it tomorrow. I'll try to try it with you. <laughs> I have yeah, a bunch of it. I want to see what'll happen. You have astrologist powder? Of course. I can't resist. <laughs> I'll join you. This is like steroids for me now. This is what I do. Yeah, you got it here. <laughs> I'll start I got doing Derek's. 30 tomorrow. <laughs> I got We're Derek's uh, astrologist. <laughs> okay, wait. He there's has a, one there's another, there's another one. Maybe maybe you've heard about this, uh, Leo. It's called acacia root uh, gum fiber. Acacia gum fiber. Some I of the Arabs use that. 
Yeah, Interesting. and that, that also helps. And you you mix that with uh, like some fiber, and then your your poop smells like acacia gum, and it's like a sweet. I don't know. It smells like a soap almost. I, you notice that? Do you notice that astrologus is kind of sweet? Yeah, and I, I got the same with the acacia gum fiber. So I ran both for quite a while, and that that improved the levels a little bit. But you know, the most thing that it improved was get, coming off everything and just stopping training altogether. So just, I just want the audience to know that like, these things work through free radical scavenging by reducing stress at the kidney, which is really yeah. powerful. So you could also mm. potentially go do IV vitamin clinics multiple times a week. It could Potentially, those things could also help. Um, but of course, those are more expensive. But there are a lot of other things like alpha lipoic acid, so many other free radical scavengers that I like that I take all day. Boston, you might want to eventually experiment with some of those, of course. I don't know a lot of, unless they're very good at scavenging free radicals, they could put stress on your kidney. So you have to choose the right ones, the most potent one, not necessarily the most potent, but the most agreeable to you. And you should, by the way, Boston, if you're not taking melatonin, melatonin is one of the best free radical scavengers. I take 10 mgs every night. Perfect. Okay. I take 40, just so you know, because wow. it's, it's that powerful. It's that powerful, but it inhibits some steroidogenesis when you do that. But what's great about melatonin, bro, so it's not, it doesn't just scavenge free radicals as melatonin. As it gets metabolized by scavenging, it keeps on each level scavenging free radicals. It's like seven or eight levels. It's one of the best you free take radicals. You all before bed? Yeah, I take it before bed, but bro, they they have so many studies showing like people with ALS, people with Parkinson's, people with crazy uh, inflammatory diseases. If they inject melatonin, it just neutralizes their C-reactive protein, everything. Oh, wow. It's you really know, You know what's crazy, Leo? Is I, I have this liquid melanotan and melatonin. It's like 10 milligrams per ml. That stuff, dude, it hits me like three times harder than the tabs. It's nuts. It's, no, it goes very fast. Yeah. It's not well absorbed. That's why. So it's much better to inject it. If I didn't know you had, you should probably. No, I'm not it. injecting it. It was, it's oral that I put in my mouth. Oh, yeah, sublingual, like right? You put it underneath your tongue and then 10 minutes yeah, later. You hold, like, it, you hold it in your, under your tongue for like 30 seconds. That shit hits me way quick. 